Let us for a few moments meditate on Sri Ramakrishna and pray for the well-being of the whole humanity. Hari Om Tatsa Om Stapaka Yajadharmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Stapaka Yajadharmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avatar Varishtaya Rama Krishna Yate Nama Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Pratyorma Mritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God Incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. The topic which I discussed in the last class was the way to bliss. How Sri Ramakrishna has taught us the methodology to reach that state of bliss. Vedanta is the way to bliss, where all the faculties of the person are integrated towards one goal, namely reaching the abode of truth. The bliss means supreme happiness. Once you get into that state, you are ever peaceful and happy. In fact, Vedanta means a person following religion finally reaches the goal That means, he will have the experience of the vision of truth. And there are many methods, many broad ways have been mentioned. One is path of knowledge, path of devotion, path of yoga. But Swami Vivekananda wanted that we should develop all the faculties in us. You must be able to integrate in a proper way jnana, bhakti and karma so that you will have uh, the experience of the bliss to the fullest satisfaction. So, if you take the example of a bird, when it flies, three things are necessary for the bird to fly. The two wings and the tail as a rudder for steering. So, the path of spiritual aspirant is like that of the bird. It is necessary to have knowledge and devotion as the two wings and yoga as the tail to keep up the balance so that he may reach the destination easily without any problem. So that is the ideal given to us by Sri Ramakrishna and Vivekananda. Jnana Bhakti Yoga. All these three are required for the flight to the abode of God. But very rarely do we find these features equally developed in individual's life. Rarely we see heart and intellect expanded, 
and develop to the same extent in a single person. One is developed at the expense of the other. One grows wild and the other falling under the shadow is neglected. Fanaticism, ignorance, intolerance, all these arise out of unequal development of heart and intellect. So, there is so much quarrel and fight in the name of religion because of uh, inability to understand the true significance. The true ideal must be to have the heart of Buddha embracing all in love, ready to sacrifice everything for the good of others and at the same time to possess the bold intellect of Shankara capable of entering into the inner essence of things. That means he must be ever ready to reject everything untrue, however strongly the heart and sentiment may wish to retain it. That we find uh, in Sri Ramakrishna's life, through devotion he reached the climax. He had the vision of the Divine Mother Kali. He went to ecstasy. And then, by the grace of the Divine Mother, he practiced all other faiths and reached the goal, the same truth viewed through other religions. That's why Sri Ramakrishna emphatically declared that all faiths lead to the same goal. As many faiths, so many paths. There should not be any, any quarrel at all. But then, one more practice was necessary in order to set the model to the whole humanity. And that is the experience of Vedanta. Vedanta just unifies all the religions. And that you can see in the life of Sri Ramakrishna. He practiced Shaktaism, he practiced Vaishnavism, he had the vision of Lord Christ, he had the uh, vision of the Muhammad. But then all these were integrated into one, that is Vedanta. That he could get how? Again by the grace of the Divine Mother. Sri Ramakrishna himself tells, everything is happening by the grace of the Divine Mother. And you know that Totapuri, who was adept in uh, Advaita Siddhi, he came when he saw Sri Ramakrishna's face, at once he recognized the supreme quality in Sri Ramakrishna. He immediately volunteered himself, Well, I would like to instruct you in the path of Vedanta. Will you please take it? It is not the disciple asking the, seeking the teacher. The teacher coming and he was overwhelmed by seeing this uh, wonderful personality, Sri Ramakrishna. He was in raptures. Where could I get such a disciple? And Sri Ramakrishna said, Well, I would love to have your instructions, but I would like to have the permission from my mother. See, though he had all experiences. Yet he was very humble, humbler than the humblest, softer than the softest. That is Sri Ramakrishna. 
and he says everything all the credits must be given to divine mother i am here because of the grace of the divine mother that means he is pointing out to the substratum the substratum of the whole creation is shakti if you propitiate shakti you get everything propitiate the mother you will see how easily we can overcome all the hurdles in your way that's the beauty and here when totapri is volunteering himself to be the guru shri ram krishna said wait a minute i want to take the permission and totapri thought probably is going to take permission from his mother we usually call earthly mother who gave birth to the this physical frame but he was surprised to see shri ram krishna went to the kali temple into the sanctum sanctorum after some time he came back well my mother agreed i am ready and totapri couldn't believe in fact he was not even uh, uh, accepting it he was making he was taking it as a fun fun let that's why shri ram krishna later on became the guru of totapri and taught him well your realization of vedant is incomplete if you don't accept the power behind the creation purush prakriti both are to be realized not simply purush or not simply prakriti both are important the creation is projected on account of the combination interaction of purush and prakriti so you have to accept that and finally of course totapri had to or made to or he is he was made to accept the presence of the divine power the para shakti adi shakti maha shakti call by any name supreme power you are able to function because of that power if that power is withdrawn you are dead totally the whole creation is dead if the power is withdrawn so well now shri ramakrishna had the realization of the shakti but he had not the realization of the para brahman that was very important to make complete his realization and then he stepped into that practice when he was practicing it when totapri instructed him on the spiritual ideas about non dualistic attitude ekameva dvitiyam one without a second how to concentrate your mind on that theme he was telling him all details and he ordered him well now you start meditation you must know that the guru is sitting in front of the disciple to watch how the disciple was meditating guru had that capacity to observe his disciple and the disciple had the capacity to do meditation in front of the guru he was 100% like a baby shri ram krishna like a baby even now if you see his face it is like a baby so so much purity personification of purity shri ram krishna and naturally it was not at all difficult for him to meditate the whole mind would sit there 
the whole mind was under his control so within a short time he raised up to the highest level of consciousness but then but then he could not go beyond a certain point that is when he was about to transcend that stage the figure of the divine mother just flashed in front of his mind it stood before him in all glory and shri ram krishna was over helm to see the divine mother but then he could not proceed in the way how tota pri taught because divine mother is standing there what will you do this is a crucial test and he could not transcend the mind beyond that state so he uh, confessed to the master to the teacher or teacher i am not able to transcend the mind why because when i sit and concentrate after some certain time mother comes and stands before me i see the divine mother of the universe the whole thing is enveloped by universe enveloped by mother i see her divine form i can't go beyond that what try again try again like that he was asking he was goading him and finally when shri ramakrishna could really transcend that how as i said uh, you must be ever ready to reject everything however strongly the heart and sentiment may wish to retain it and this is the test now and finally he applied the uh, knowledge so with the application of knowledge he could go beyond the form aspect of god and finally he realized the uh, ultimate reality he experienced that brahman undivided the substratum of everything the substratum of purusha and prakriti the originator of everything everything is dissolved in it and everything comes out from it that it always exists that is vedanta what is that it that it is brahman so now shri ram krishna's knowledge is complete well he knows what is substratum he knows what is purusha and prakriti he knows what is creation he knows what all these human beings what are these things everything and he is tremendously peaceful tremendously happy that's the state of shri ramakrishna and there you find how the knowledge and devotion the mingle so nicely in fact i had gone to elhabad in india this is a famous uh, place prayag three rivers they join there ganga yamuna saraswati saraswati is not visible of course they say it is invisible it has become invisible well we can see ganga yamuna i saw it's a beautiful sight ganga coming in one direction yamuna coming from another direction colors are different huge and they join the joining point it's tremendously beautiful when they mingle how there is uh, 
tremendous activity of cheerfulness and happiness. The mingling of Ganga Yamuna, that is, the mingling of jnana and bhakti, knowledge and devotion, properly blended, that is full experience. That is the experience which Sri Ramakrishna wants. So, as the disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, we must target on that. Knowledge and devotion, they are to be perfectly developed. Not simply knowledge, not simply devotion. Both must support one another. Knowledge and devotion. See, knowledge is, I often give the example, there is a sweet, there is a sweet, there is a knowledge. But to know how that sweet is, you have to taste it. Then only you know how that sweet is. You have to taste it. So, bhakti is the taste. To taste the knowledge of reality, you need bhakti. So, jnana and bhakti are very important and we have to develop. And Sri Ramakrishna is the, has set the model. He is the model in front of us. If you go a little deeper and analyze the achievements of the great men of the world, we find that one time these great saints or men of spirituality, they didn't care a fig for the world, the worldly things. They just went away from all these things to a secluded place, to a cave, to a forest or to a mountainside to spend whole time in solitude. Imagine what prompted Sri Chaitanya to embrace and accept Tarun, one of his uh, disciples. Why did Jesus accept water offered by the Samaritan woman? What made Lord Buddha eager to sacrifice his valuable life to save the life of a dumb, insignificant kid? On the one hand, they defy the world against all odds. They fight vehemently against all errors, evils and superstitions and on the other sacrifice their lives on the altar of humanity. Truly, truly they are harder than stone and softer than a flower. That is the characteristic of a saint. They are very hard, they are very soft. But men make a distinction between these personalities. They call one a jnani and the other a bhakta. Really, there can be no sharp line of demarcation between jnana and bhakti. They are blended together. When emotions play outwardly, a prominent part in man's life, we say in our common parlance that he is a bhakta. But we must bear in mind that if he is a true bhakta, his intellect also, the discrimination and ratiocination too, has developed him to a great extent in his progress towards the ideal. In this connection, it must be understood that the development of emotions or that of intellect and ratiocination is not religion. For religion consists in experiences beyond the domain of sentiment and intellect. I am talking about the higher type of religion, not the, the way how ordinarily we think, uh, we understand religion. Sentiment and intellect work under the limitations of time, space and causation and the experience of religious truth must always be beyond them. You must go beyond time, space and causation. Hence, it comes to this. The development of heart and intellect, bhakti and jnana, is not religion as such, but only the means. They are the means 
the means is not the end knowledge is, itself is not the end bhakti itself is not the end a man in the state of samadhi what do you call him do you call him a gyani or do you call him a bhakta but again this state of samadhi does not last for good though it is easily accessible to him afterwards at his will sri ramakrishna could go into samadhi many times in a day many times he could go he could he could come back he could rise up he could transcend and he could bring down he has come down from the highest plane to the plane of ordinary consciousness we have seen in the life of shri ramakrishna how it was true but the result is that his outlook on men and things changes altogether his heart expands like that of buddha and his intellect develops like that of shankara that's what swami vekananda wanted heart of buddha intellect of shankara i want such person that's the real model he is then called a true gyani and a true bhakta now as i said gyana and bhakti are the two wings just two wings are not enough tail is also required to have a well balanced flight yoga has been compared to the tail of a bird which keeps up the balance of the progress of a sadhaka by the process of yoga a sadhaka that means an aspirant is able to keep the goal fixed in his mind the literal meaning of the word yoga is union union with what it must be union with god this union with god again involves it involves the disunion with unreal objects and this is but another name for renunciation renunciation means disunion with unreal objects the idea of renunciation a freeing the mind from the bondages of attachment to sense objects and fixing it on god has been extolled by all seers and aspirants unless renunciation comes in the mind jnana and bhakti cannot thrive so long as the mind is running after sense objects there can grow no real hankering after the realization of the highest goal the vedic seers declared it is from bliss that all the world proceeds it is in bliss that it lives and it is in bliss that it is dissolved in its dissolution they declared this after realizing the ideal there's a great deal of difference between idealizing the real and realizing the ideal the farmer seeks to cover a rotten crops with beautiful odors and flowers while the latter reveals the true knowledge by attaining the truth one of the great persons has said iron rusts from disuse stagnant water loses its purity and in cold weather becomes frozen even so does inaction sap the vigors of the mind so if you have to have the experience of bliss you must be tremendously active 
he must not let go the energy of the mind in any other way all the sources must be properly tapped in and directed towards reaching the goal the abode of god the abode of truth the place where one experiences supreme bliss so what is the way to bliss the way to bliss is you fly like a bird with gyana and bhakti as the wings and yoga as the rudder tailor steering you will reach the supreme state of bliss with these words i conclude my topic the way to bliss page 654 After the devotees had left the master Mahima Charan brought Hazra to the room he was present M was present Mahima said to Ramakrishna sir i have a complaint against you why have you asked Hazra to go home he has no desire to return to his family master said His mother has told Ramlal how much she is suffering on account of his being away from home so I have asked Hazra to go home at least for 3 days and see her can anyone succeed in spiritual discipline if it causes suffering to his mother while visiting Brindavan Shri Ramakrishna said I had almost made up my mind to live there when I remembered my mother I said to myself my mother will weep if I stay away from her so I returned here with Mathur Babu besides why should a gyani like Hazra be afraid of going back to the world Mahima said with a smile sir that would be a pertinent question of hazra uh, that would be a pertinent question if hazra were a gyani master said smilingly oh hazra has attained everything he has just a little attachment to the world because of his children and a small debt as people say my aunt now he my aunt is now in perfect health only she is slightly ill mahima said where sir where sir is hazra's knowledge master said smilingly oh you don't know everybody says hazra is quite a man everybody knows that he lives in the dakshineshwar temple garden people talk of nothing but hazra who would bother to mention my name on love hazra said you sir are incomparable you have no peer in the world therefore nobody understands you master said there you are to be sure no one can have dealings with the incomparable so why should people mention me at all mahima said what does he know sir he will do your bidding master said that's not so you had better ask him about it he said to me you and i are on even terms mahima said he argues a great deal master said now and then he teaches me a lesson all love sometimes i scold him when he argues too much later when i am lying in bed inside the mosquito curtain i feel unhappy at the idea of having offended him so i leave the bed go to hazra and salute him then i feel peace of mind to hazra why do you address the pure atman as ishwara 
द प्योर आत्मन इज इन एक्टिव एंड इज द विटनेस ऑफ द थ्री स्टेट्स वेन आई थिंक ऑफ द एक्ट्स ऑफ क्रिएशन प्रिजर्वेशन एंड डिस्ट्रक्शन देन आई कॉल द प्योर आत्मन ईश्वर वॉट्स द प्योर आत्मन लाइक इट इज लाइक a magnet lying at a great distance from a needle the needle moves but the magnet lies motionless inactive we should stop here the way to bliss has been shown by shri ramakrishna how to get it you have to walk through the way that's all you have to walk through the way that means you must know you are walking in a spiritual way not in the worldly way so coming to shri ramakrishna means practicing spirituality in your daily life at every moment whether you are in the chapel whether you are in the job whether you are in the home wherever you are that's the thing chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quenched that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within own name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various sort thy names o lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself do honor to all chant unceasingly the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is the prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many times i say may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet o oh, how i long for the day when an instant separation from thee o lord will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thy arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for the word my heart's beloved thou went the alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all rejoice everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous reign tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free may good be tied all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops May all countries be freed from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased he being satisfied the whole universe feels satisfied